All right, so today we're coming to you with another episode of Auto Glass Tech Talk, and we're taking it out to the Big Apple, New York, New York, big city of dreams. So we got Mark Park on the line. So what's good, homie? What's up, man? What's going on? What's going on, Mark? We the infamous the Mark here. We got the rubber band man of Auto Glass. <laughs> <laughs> you guys so, are funny. Yeah, so... Uh, what's going so on? Well, where hey, are you in New York or are you in Jersey? Where where are you at? I'm New Jersey. Oh, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah. Brick, so, New Jersey. New Jersey. Brick, Brick, New Jersey. Jersey. We're yeah. out here, bro. You know what I mean? I just live in a bubble, bro. It's not like I just stay in the same two towns, bro. Like what I say on this on this site, bro. I don't lie. Like I don't. I just I don't I don't travel. You know what I mean? Like. All right. Stay close. So, so how far is Atlantic City from you? Uh, that's the only place I will travel, bro. But that's like, uh, like, it depends, bro. Like, if I'm hammering down, it's it's like an hour, bro. 40 minutes. I've made it there in 40 minutes like a fiend before. But, like, you take that loss, bro, it's like an hour, 45-minute ride home. You know what I mean? You're just yeah. hugging the wheel and taking life. So, so, so that's as far as you go. Like, I go that far for jobs, so that's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, bro, I feel you. I, dude, I, if I get a job, like, 15 miles away, I'm crying like a little bitch. I'm not even going to lie, bro. Like, <laughs> Okay, now okay, now I got a question for you. Say you're doing a job. Say you had a job, and say it was an hour drive, but you're gonna make a stack profit, profit a stack. Would you go? And you had to go. You couldn't send a boy. You had to do it. Bro, it's like I, still. Honestly, bro, back in the day, yeah, I've done it for less, bro, way less. You know what I mean? Like just to fill the day up. But now, like, I got like most of the car dealers, right? And a lot of people hate the car dealers, but like I'm. I'm on Route 88, which is literally, I could walk there if I had to. You know what I'm saying? I got Route 37, which I could walk there if I had to. Route 9 and Freehold. So, uh, a couple on Route 36, which is like 30 minutes away. But, bro, I mean, that's all I really do is dealers. You know, I got James in the other truck. He does more of the retail jobs, the referrals. Uh, it's about it, you know? So, so work, work smart, not hard, man. So, keep it with a certain, with a small mile radius. That makes keep sense. it small, so, keep it all. Okay, so... I'm all, I'm retail, you know what I mean? I'm chasing that retail dollar, but like, bro, I couldn't deal with the people anymore, dude. Like, I was driving off on people, like, just crazy shit, dude. Like, I feel like if you agree to a price and you're there on time and you're gonna do your job, and let's just say you tell them 250 or 300, bro, you don't negotiate when the job's done. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's yeah. just like nails on the floor to me, and I couldn't do it anymore, bro. Like, I call someone and I follow a procedure. Like, yeah, we'll be there in 30 minutes. Okay, so we get there in 30 minutes, and then you know they got that. Oh, I'm five minutes away, 10 minutes ago. Call them back. We just live in a different society now. I know, like, when I go with the dealers, bro, the car's there at 8 a.m. It's going to be done before 5 p.m., you know? Right. So, so with, with the customer interaction thing, do you think that's more like a, a northern thing where people want to, like, barter and haggle or, or what? Yep. We got, we got all these, uh, these fake mobsters out here, you know what I mean? So, like, yeah. they all... Hundred dollar millionaires, bro. They feel like they're the only, they're the last people spending money. You know, like they'll be, oh, what's the best, best cash price you could do? I'm paying cash, bro. I don't care how you pay, just pay me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Pay me. We agree to, bro. You know, everyone's Tony Soprano. If you ever seen that show, yeah. And they're, they're a boss with a couple hundred bucks <laughs> in their hand. Yeah. Okay, that's what so we. Do here. I, I, I'm. You, you two guys, Drift and Mark. You yeah. guys are in a in a cash strong market. Yeah, big time. Okay, so the stuff that you guys go through is stuff that I don't go through. Yeah, you know, you definitely. Know what I mean? Like I, I if you know, I, I get cheap people who call, and you can usually tell they're cheap just by kind of car they're asking about, you know. So I don't deal with a whole lot of cash. <clears throat> so to hear the stories you guys have to deal with, you know. Like, I've never gone to a job, do the job, and the guy trying to be like, hey, man, can you knock 20 bucks off? I've had people, you know. All and, the time, bro. All the time. Okay, yesterday, I had a cash job. My last job of the day yesterday was a cash job for some college girl. And I quoted her. And, I mean, and she goes, do you want card or cash? I'll tell you, I'll, I'll take cash. Of course, cash. I go, I told her, I go, if you pay me cash, I'll knock off the tax for you. And she 
was like willing to still give me money plus a tip, you know? So I don't have to deal with that kind of stuff. So to hear these stories just blows my mind. All right, look, I got one right here too. We got a, uh, uh, I had this lady call me on a 2020 Mercedes GLC, you know, like you, you spent, you spent over 75 grand on that car, right? Looking for a windshield, I quote her twelve hundred for uh for OEM. It's like four fifty five hundred dollars my cost, and it's like six something uh list. So you know I'm, I'm making some good profit, but I gotta put some money out still. So uh, she never hits me back, and then she hits up uh, Angela, a friend of mine who I do some work for. She hit her up, and um, they didn't know that she'd hit me up, so they started talking, got a price together, and the lady didn't even remember that she had given him her card. And starts messaging me like, oh, I'll see you tomorrow, this and that. Nope, sorry. Like, people just trying to, you, you got a 2020 GLC. What are you What are you haggling the price for? Why are you trying to argue over this price? Like, like why don't you have, see, I don't understand this. California does have the option of glass insurance. Why don't you have yeah. glass insurance? Yeah. Yep. But some, yeah. People like the, some people like the, the whole deal of like, you know, you get on Craigslist, you buy something, you're like, hey. What's the lowest you would take? So I think that has liberated people to want to like challenge the price of Dude, services and stuff because they'd be like, "What's the, the cash price?" That. We're in the land of Craigslist right here. Yeah. That should start it in San Francisco. Like San Francisco Bay Area is Craigslist. Right. That's I think so that makes people ask for a cheaper price because they think like oh, old school mentality. Like, what's the cash price? You know what I mean? Yeah. And they'd be like, "Oh, what's the best offer?" And they think cash that, used to be king. Yeah. And so, so I think more. that's the, I think that's the mentality of some people. I do believe some people take it overboard, thinking that just because they're paying cash, like they're your only customer, and you're supposed to like get them some amazing deal. But well, I, I'm actually I'm actually um, putting together a little uh, commercial video um, that is a car that got done and there was some rust, and I documented everything, you know close up pictures of the rust and me knocked it all down and all that other stuff. So I'm going to put together this iMovie and it's going to emphasize on there about how, you know, the, the long, the, the, what, what's the saying? The, um, the, the, the sweetness of a great deal is long last year. Something about how I forgot how it says, yeah, but yeah. it's some cool thing now, you know, you get a great deal, but you get screwed in the end basically. Yeah, you end up paying more in the long run because, yeah, you get screwed over and you got way more work to do later on. So it's kind of like laugh now, cry later. Yeah. Hey, so, Mark, I got a question for you, man. So doing the dealerships and all that, if they have cameras and all that kind of shit, that's none of your responsibility. They're just going to take care of it for right there at the dealership, correct? Correct, bro. 100%, dude. And I got an advantage because I have a dealer for every car manufacturer out here. So... In reality, hypothetically, there's a guy that did an Odyssey, another company, right? Camera didn't calibrate. He took it to Honda, and Honda wouldn't do it for him because it was an aftermarket glass. See, in my scenario, Honda just called the service writer like, hey, yo, you know, Bill or Rita, whoever, whatever dealer it is, they're going to take care of it for me. You know what I mean? Some people are kind of cornered out here if they don't have the machine, you know? Mm -hmm. So I don't know what really came about it, but the guy called me up. And uh, he said, yo, can you make a call for me? Motherfucker, no, I can't make a call for you. I hate you. You know what I mean? So that's what it really came down to. <laughs> like, like, you know, yeah. it's it's just what it is, you know? Uh, anything. Like, I just go there, do the job. Car stays where it is. Whatever they do after that is on them, you know? I got a dealership question for you, right? So I don't do replacements. So I don't know this. It might be a dumb question, but. All right, so say you at the you at the uh, Nissan or Ford dealership, right? And you finna do a replacement. How do you pick which windshield? Say you finna order your glass for Migrant. How do you pick which windshield you gonna buy for Migrant to put in there? Uh, well, most of the time, a lot a lot of the work that they give me is if it has a camera, it's going it's going oh wait off okay. the rip there. But uh, I'm so tight with all the service writers. Like personally, mm -hmm. they'll take a you know I'll give them take a picture over the rearview mirror section. Mm -hmm. Other glass sent to me. I don't know what to get. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just narrowed it like that. Yeah. So a lot of times I see these guys struggle with like decoding the VIN, mm -hmm. all this. I don't really have to deal with that, you know, mm -hmm. to get the right part. Right. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes I'll be honest, I'm lazy. Like, you know, if there's three three different options and it's from the dealer, they'll decode the VIN and they'll handle it for me. You know what I mean? Right. So they'll just. Well, I mean, but 
it from the dealership, they should decode it for you anyways. You know what I mean? They should be, have, have all different. that part yeah. number. Bro, there's some that got 10 jobs to do for the day. I got four windows on the back because six of the ones that I'm doing are dealer provided glass, you know? Right. But I have That's it down nice. to yeah. nice. they know every dealer. They're already going to have the car mm-hmm. in a certain section for me. You know, if, if it's below a certain degree or if it rained one drop, they're going to pull it in somewhere. I know what designated area I'm going to. The glass is going to be there in parts. I don't have to wait. It's just bing, bang, boom. I yeah. just go. What? I mean, they help me. I help them. I take care of them. They take care of me. Yeah, say you're not doing the OE glass, right? How do you pick between, like, XYZ, Trival, or Fuya? Like, how do you pick? Yo, honestly, I'm going to keep it 100% with you, bro. What they send me is what they send me, you know? If yeah. it looks good, yeah, it goes in the car. Good. Oh, okay. I mean, no out here. <clears throat> well, yeah, no. because, I mean, in, in, all, in all honesty, if you're doing it through the dealership, your company's not really attached to it to the customer, you know what I mean? Because the dealer's not going to tell the customer, yeah. oh, we had this company do the job. They want to keep it that they did it. So Yeah, it's just the labor only. Yeah, so, I mean, even if you're providing the glass, it's still labor only in a sense because you're not really dealing with the customer directly. And the well, dealer, yeah. never, the dealership's never going to give it up that they're not doing the job, the work themselves, because they want to keep that image up to the customer that they're actually doing the work. So... A lot of the cars I do, bro, they're either they're gonna they're gonna certify them and put them back on the lot and sell them. If they don't sell them, it's going to the auction in 30 days. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I kind of found a niche where where I need to be. You know, I don't I can't I don't have the tolerance anymore to deal with the public. You know, like that whole customer is always right thing. Bro, yeah. I'll send you your money back and tell yeah. you who else. You were just going on about that. Yeah, you know, you know what, what what you said right there, Mark. It says you have, you have a niche. And I think that's what the thing is, is so many of us have a niche, but it's our niche. Yeah. And other people want to so quick try to convince everybody else that their niche is better than your niche. Right. And what may work, I mean, we're three guys who are all respected in our industry for what we do. We have clients. We don't have customers. You know, we have repeats. We have people who count on us all the time. Yeah. And we're in three different parts of the country and we have three different niches. And neither one of our niches really worked for the other person because right. what Drift does would never work for Chris. You know, I mean, for Mark, which, you know, what you guys I, do work for each other. And what I, I do, do dealers like that either. Yeah, totally. Yeah, what I do wouldn't work for either one of you guys. Yeah. So, but, but who are we to say, no, I'm right and your shit's wrong? You yeah. know what I mean? We're in totally different places now. If we were in the same neighborhood, same city, you know what I mean? Then we can have the argument. But even Speaking in the of, same state, you could be in the same state, man, and we'll work in San Francisco, don't work in San Diego. But oh, even yeah. you, that's you know. real. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, that's facts. Yeah. Hey, yeah. what works? Hey, Chris, you saw we you were in Arizona. We were up at Stephen Megan's shop. Yeah. What they do would never work for me. Oh yeah, no, to- two totally different worlds. Like, yeah, like you think you were in totally different states. Like, by the way, everything just like it's just totally opposite. You know, it's like yeah. It is. It's you different. Know, so it's, we, that, that's what gets me. That's what trips me out. We get all these arguments and pissy matches on, on the group about who's got a better hustle. Well, motherfucker, we all got the same hustle. Yeah, we got the same hustle. We go about it different ways. But at the end yep. of the day, you, you got to pay your light bill, man. So you got to do a work for you. Just because yep. such and such in New Jersey doing it this way and somebody could be in you know, uh, Long Island, Staten Island doing it another way don't mean... They better, you worse, or what is? Hey, you got to do it with feed your family. <laughs> hey, hey, that's that's that, that's real. Yeah. All right. Can you edit that out? Jesus yeah. Christ! Fucking dog. <laughs> Everybody get the. You guys hear the dogs? Yeah, we can hear. Just now, yeah. It's all right. It's like, have you ever watched Sam the Cooking Guy? It's like a Sam the Cooking Guy episode. This dog's always barking in the background. He's all fucking Astro yells, like just randomly yells, and you're all, what the fuck? <laughs> Yeah. Hey, you want me to take it inside, or do you want me to just roll? Oh, no, you good. We still can hear you tonight. It's not bad. Okay. Yeah. All right. Charlie, shut your ass up. Like that? <laughs> <laughs> this is New Jersey, bro. You got 20 fish in a bucket, and you got 40 people that want to eat. You get what I'm saying? Sometimes someone's going to shoot eight of them. Sometimes someone's going to shoot two of them. But a lot of people are going home with nothing. You know what I mean? So I moved out of that section. The thing with the deal is here is to be able to float the 30-day pay period. So I looked yeah. at it, you know, and I said, 
here, here's the catch. You got quality auto glass, which is a pretty big establishment. They got a lot of overhead. They were doing all the deals. So let's say, you know, Drift is out there doing all their work for quality auto glass. They like him. He gets a higher offer to go to another company, right? He leaves. Now they send some new random guy in there. Their prices are high, and they have no other option. They're like the only other glass company in New Jersey that could float that many deals. Look, all the guys out here that are better than me, there might be, bro. But you know what it comes down to? What's the best choice of who can float that pay period? So a lot. I just took a four dealer, like the other day. Supposedly the guy couldn't float the bill, but. That's so what, so what do you what do you what do you float your dealers on seven day thirty day how do you float your dealers? Uh, well, a couple of them have it's mostly all thirty. But what happens? Is some of them have like a cleaning fee of the account. I don't know. It's like six percent if you need your money every thirty. It's like two point five percent if you need it every forty five days. But the good thing now, at the end of the year, every time you know people will complain. I'll see it on AGT all the time. People will complain like, oh, they didn't pay me this that whatever. But you know what happens when that accountant comes at the end of the year? catch all the bills they have to pay on like i got a six thousand dollar check sitting inside for all the invoices they forgot throughout the year you know what i mean mm-hmm. so all right so i, I mean, know what so you're i know every month they'll, they'll miss one they'll miss two but it adds up it's like i never lose my biggest issue out here is with the paperwork i'm kind of lazy bro go to work do my jobs let's say you know i got 10 jobs six, six of them they sign, they go. You know, sometimes, honestly, bro, I'm I'm such in a rush, bro, and I feel the agita that I'll just be like, do the PO later. I'm out. Mm-hmm. Like this happened the other day, and I just jetted. But, you know, when you get those couple cash jobs, you got money in your pocket, do you really want to go home and do these paperwork? Or are you just going to go to the bar like a degenerate like myself? <laughs> and start hanging out, bro, you know? <laughs> I'll worry right. about it later. So, so <laughs> you're on... A thirty day with them, so you're you're not getting paid until sixty days, unless well, you unless you do your fee thing where where you pull it out where you can pull it quicker. Yeah, well they well like two or three of them they want six percent every thirty, or they give you the forty five day stretch option and they only take two and a half percent. But to be honest with you, dude, wow. I deal with the same people every day. Like I know who's real and who's not. You know, so even yeah. some of these little or like smaller fleets, used car dealer guys. Bro, their bet their their checking book is there. It's endless. You know what I mean. So there's this one place. They're actually Hasidic Jewish, dude. They write checks all day. Their money's golden. So sometimes I'll like go four, five, six jobs. You know. Sometimes I'll have the car at the repair shop down the road getting tires. I'll do it there, take the VIN number, and then I'll just walk in the office when I'm finally there at their headquarters, and I'll and I'll, you know, I'll crack them for four, five, six, whatever it is, and they'll stroke a check. Their money's good. Some of these guys were, you know. They write you a check and they tell you, oh, well, can you put it in two days? Like, I never really want to see you again. So at this point, I could basically pick and choose who I deal with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. If you call me and I see your number now and I'm cringing already, like, oh, this guy's calling me. I already don't want you. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's I feel that. Saying, oh, how fast can you come? Or how cheap can you do it for? Or it's always a story. My detailer broke it or my guy broke it. It's my guy. It's my dad's car. It's my brother's car. Give me I'm a dumb. deal, man. Yeah. That's what I mean. Dude, I my this... friends are fair across the board. And yeah. whether this is an arrogant statement or not, I tell these people this: like you're not, you're not going to get an all-around better package. Like you might have some guy that hops in a van and he goes and does your job. And lifetime warranty is only as long, I guess, as far as you're established. You know what I mean? Everybody could say it, dude. You call up somebody a year later, they're no longer in business. Yeah, they mean nothing now. Yeah. yeah. You know, like I've, I've been here for a while, bro. You know, I've restructured my business many times. I don't even think what I like. Life's easy for me now. I don't even consider it like a business. I don't even look at it like that. It's just what I do. It's a hustle. You know, I know I'm going to wake up every day, dude. I can roll out of bed late and, and call people and say, yo, I woke up late and they're all going to cover my ass and cover for me. That's how tight I am with the people that I go to all the time. You know, I don't sell a song or a dance. Like I just come in, I'm here to work, respectful, get the keys, get the car, get the work order on to the next one. You know what I mean? Yeah. I see who's really? out here. It's like a circus. They're putting on an act and some people like that, but I'm just, 
I don't, I don't ask about your life. I don't care about anything. I just care about the bottom line, bro. You're going to pay me when we're done. And I'm going to stand behind what I do. I think it's a fair transaction. This is a price. This is when I'm going to be here, do the job, get paid. And I think it works, you know? Yeah. I guess it all depends on yeah. the area. You're only doing insurance work. Then you got to sell yourself, you know? But this is not a, we're not like our shop where, you know, you come in for an oil change, then we sell you tires, then your car breaks down, you need a starter. Somebody might need a windshield two doors down from me. I do it on a Monday. They might not need another windshield for five years or a backlash. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Oh, yeah. So you got the one and done customers. And then, like Jeff said, you got the clients, the people that are always going to use you. You know so. what? We, I was just talking about this with Joe because uh, uh, Joe had some work done on his Camaro. And dude promised him, uh, I, he said, like three days a week. And it turned out to be like a whole entire month. And he still still didn't do it all right and everything. But it was a referral. And um, going back to what you were saying, like um, me personally, like we were talking about this, and I, I take care of my referrals more. Uh, I, I will take care of them more, like go a little bit above for them, even though even if they're a first time customer, they're a referral before I will on a brand new customer, just because that referral means more to me. You know, that's your those those same people are still coming back to you just because it's not their windshield doesn't mean it's not them still getting you that job, you know, when a referral gets a good experience, they're more likely to refer other people also. Yeah, it's like that guy, the guy who posted that I did his chip repair. That was just some random dude, and he was all happy with what I did, so he posted up for me. You know? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah. yeah best business card, word of mouth. You know, uh, so when you get the yep. word of mouth customers, you know, it's best to take care of them because word of mouth is is spread like wildfire. You know, they'll tell somebody, you know, and tell somebody, and, and the same way you do somebody wrong, them same kind of people you're doing wrong, that bad, that negative review. And hurt you so you know what I mean. That same customer said that same customer said something that was really real. He's like, You do a bad job, they'll tell a thousand people. You do a good job, they'll only tell a hundred. Yeah. And that's the truth. Yeah. yeah, for real. Yeah, man. Well, the problem is a lot of these people don't take responsibility of their actions. Like if there was ever any type of issue that ever occurred, bro, I will take the profit end off, right? Not off, but like I don't care about the money. I care about rectifying that problem first i can't sleep 100 mm percent -hmm. yeah yep. i just put in the guy's window in a 69 camaro he did the body work in his garage right the top corners weren't right he's sending me these pictures and he was cool and i said to him look bro like i can't pull the window up any higher you know i think it's the body i went there i cut the window out it's 100 percent the body but it ate at me until that was right so now he's got to do whatever he's got to do to make it right, I'll put the window back in. Yeah. A little bit goes a long way, you know. Yeah, big time. I think I think that's uh I think that's where we I think a lot of us, you know, right here fall in line with each other too, is that you know, we we we're about making money. We want to make money. Like there's no doubt about that. But if then we get into a situation like that, the the money's not the first thing on our mind. It's the fi figure it out, make it right, and make them happy. And just, you know, like deal with the situation mm -hmm. and then, and then, all right, you still make a little money on top. Cool. You know, if, if you break even cool, if I start losing money that, <laughs> now, now we got a problem. <laughs> yeah. Now y'all right. Like understand transparency. Well, that's key. You know, that'll help people and people, people see it, you know, people feel it and know it when you being transparent with them. And even if it's a mistake on your end, they're more willing, they're more likely to give you the benefit of the doubt because of your yeah. honesty and transparency. Yeah. I don't, I don't like, I don't like the liars, bro. I like just keeping it a buck. You know what I mean? Tell them the truth. Honestly, goes a long way. Shit happens. You tell them the truth up front, and you don't try to hide it. I think trying to hide something is even worse. Yeah. yeah. So you're just better off fessing up, telling the truth, and taking care of it. We live in a society where integrity and everything is rare these days, and it goes a long way with the right people. I know in the first five seconds of that phone call, when you call me, if I even want to take your money. You know, I'm in a boat where I don't have to deal with you. I had someone call me the other day, just start barking at me because they couldn't get in touch with Safe Flight. Well, I'm not Safe Flight. Keep right. calling them. You know what I mean? And I, I just hung up. You're right. not going to tell me what to do for you. You know, you're not my mother. So I said, I can't do it. Call Safe Flight. Really, in reality, I just didn't want to deal with her. You know what I'm saying? Right. And kept it moving. Uh, 
I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I had good experience of bad things happening where, you know, people would refer you because you were honest. And sometimes you have to come back down to reality and get checked every now and then to see how you're going to handle a bad situation. You know what I mean? Everyone's good when they're good. It's how you handle it when you're bad. You that's know what? Good, uh, oh, that's, why, that's why I always, when I was, um, before I was really established to have my own business, when I was just subcontracting, when I first got off <clears throat> on my own, I used to tell the people, I said, hey, don't, don't judge me when the jobs are going perfect. Judge me when shit hits the fan. You know what I mean? How do I handle you know, a bad situation. And even today, you know what I mean? Like I would never tell a customer that cause I don't want them to think anything's ever going to go bad. But you know, if you have a fleet or, you know, a, 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 a account like a dealership or whoever, somebody like that, you know, like my body shop, you went to my body shop, Chris, they, yeah. you know, we, we, ha we have like the same relationship with our body shops. Like me and you have our, the way we both deal with our body shops is very, very much alike. You know, like I just did that beetle roof and I just taken it straight up, up the ass on this whole job. I scratched the fucking car. I had to pay the painter to fucking fix it. And then I fucking threw away the dealer window that I saved. So I had to buy another fucking dealer window. So a job that I should have, a job that I was, should have been making over $400 profit on, I'm making like 70 bucks. So, but yeah. this car first that, cause everybody in that body shop is such that car. It, it started off with the, the owner of the shop telling us to do the wrong shit. Like, we were only supposed to change the cap. And if we would have known that from the get-go, I would have never pulled the window. The headliner would never have to come down. There would never have been a scratch on the car. All this other shit that happened would have never happened. Right. If, yeah. the, if the owner of the body shop would have communicated right. Right. You know? but, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go in there and start harping and shit and barking and shit. You just whatever. Yeah, just suck you it know? up. Deal yeah. with the situation. Yeah, you know, I mean, that that body shop accounts for almost 50 racks a year for me between the referrals and the money there. So, yeah. you know, it, and that's the first thing I had to buy this whole year. So if I'm only buying one fucking window this whole year, then hey, I'm coming. Yeah, that ain't bad. Yeah. No. <laughs> hey, hey uh, off work topic, uh, Mark. I want to know about the area because I've never been back there. I can see in the background. I see trees and houses and shit. Is your area like more suburban neighborhood, or are you close to the city with skyscrapers and shit? Like, how how is how you know, guys, you know, skyscrapers and shit? Like Ricky, that dude Ricky up there. He lives by North Jersey and South Jersey life. It's different, you know what I mean? We got a town over that's like ritzy ass people. They all want to go to the beach, drive their Wranglers. Life is good, you know. You know, their grand their grandparents made four hundred thousand a year their whole life, so they're just living off money that they can't mess up. I know a couple guys there, and this like I could probably mess up the money, you know what I mean? But they're generational. Now here where I live in my neighborhood, I, I stick out. I stick out because it's like a middle class neighborhood of the the area I'm in. I was just able to get a house here, young cheap i got really 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 lucky and then we got brick tucky which is like lifted pickup trucks and you know a lot of chewing tobacco and cousins oh, that, cousins that's like why that. you got these trucks now that's why that's how... <laughs> <laughs> like over here where i am everyone's, everyone's cool where i'm at you know like this town it has everything bro and it's being developed so like Dude, I want to go eat at this point. You go back 20 years ago, it was more like a farm type of mentality. Now, we got Lakewood, which is a lot of Hasidic Jews infiltrating. So they're buying a lot of houses out here, straight up knocking on the door. If your house is worth 300000 they're offering you four twenty five to get out. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but because of this pandemic, a lot of New York crowd is coming down, you know, into central Jersey, south Jersey. And they're overpaying for houses. You know, they had a house in whatever, New York, for 800000 You know, they'll overpay for a house out here because they're losing their ass up there. It's weird. But uh, I get it. They, they do it out here a lot. I have, I had dude, the house sorry, I used to live in across the street. Two bedroom, one bath, flat top, 1940 house. I mean, you know, bottom of the barrel, like, you know, threw together like maybe a thousand square feet at the most. Okay, half a million dollars, and and then they they still got over the asking price. Every house out here in our area now, people pay over the asking price. You you make an offer. Yeah. Tapping yeah. out here, tapping out here right now. 
in my neighborhood. Like I could sell my house and make lots of money, but where am I going to go? I'm going to pay uh, an inflated price in an inflated market. Yes. You know, I live modest, bro. My house is like 1300 square feet. It's a ranch. I bought it young, but now I thought I was, I was going to move, you know, move on up. But at the same time, like for what I pay in a mortgage a month, I can't even go and get a two bedroom and the projects of brick. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. hey, the projects out here is more expensive than if I live in the regular city. I tried moving back to the projects and that you can't do it. It costs more out there than it does in the regular area. Yeah. I just, yeah, yeah. Hey, I got a neighbor who's okay. He looks like he looks at kitty porn, but he never comes out to have it. <laughs> You know what? I helped him make his leaves so he don't shoot me when he when he loses. <laughs> I got some older people across the road that are happy that, you know, I'm not throwing parties. They probably saw me when I moved in, like, this kid's going to have parties. Well, now, as the years went on, you still got your kids living at home that are the same age as me, and they watch me go to work every day. So, oh. yeah, I do, I do some ridiculous nah, – I don't do any ridiculous shit. Like, I probably look at this truck like, what the fuck is this kid doing now? Right. But seeing me flip cars, you know, and – go to work every day you know i'm not i'm not dealing drugs out here and you know if he needs something on his car like i'll help him like he had his suburban and he's trying to change a fuel filter he was under it for like 48 hours oh. one week <laughs> with his wife telling him what to do until i finally walked over like bro you got to drop that tank you know what i mean so right. he was like planking under there but we're cool you know when he needed a window on his daughter's car brian didn't charge him you know what i'm saying yeah I, but it's weird. I mean, like now, bro, I I, I want to eat whatever. There's 25 places to go within a mile from my house. You know, yeah. we got all got all types of shop rights and stopping shops. There's no reason to leave. So when I tell you on this site, bro, I only stay in two towns. I literally only stay in two towns. Maybe the king amongst peasants, but I'll take it. You know what I mean? I don't I don't, <laughs> I don't really do it from my area. You know? Yeah. All right. So lo locally, who who's who is uh who's your competition locally, like within your two towns? Uh, but by me? Yeah. In your two areas, like who's your biggest competition? You said, you said quality was one of them. Qu quality's not even competition anymore, bro. Okay. Because, let's just say hypothetically, numbers wise, I probably have seventy percent. Well, I bro, I probably have over that in the area that I travel of the dealers they used to have. You get what I'm saying? Okay, like these, okay. But I'm not going that far. And they got they got some, you know, to the left and right of me, but they kind of, they're kind of out from this area. You know, you know, bro, these service writers, they last for six months. So these yeah. used car members last for six months and so they move, you know, you stay with them. And there's a guy out here, Louis. Uh, Louis basically the king of used cars. Uh, I'm real tight with Louis. Mm -hmm. that's how i say the giants game and the jets game every weekend you know on his tickets he gives me tells me i'm too old to go here's my tickets take your kids you're a good kid mark you know he hugs me when he sees me but he also treats people like straight shit you know <laughs> yeah i don't i got blessed but louis family has been in this industry for a while so if i in a weird way dude if i want a car dealer you little used car guy because he arms a lot of cars when these guys mess up their floor plan all i gotta do is be like yo louis Call so and so at this. I want to do their glass. So, I mean, he really does take care of me, but I take care of him. You know, I think he values. He told me one time, it's real weird to get the guy any any time from him. But he said, you know what, Mark, you do the right thing. You show up for work every day. He's like, I like to see young people who are working hard to get ahead, and it's rare these days, bro. You know yeah, what I mean? It is. Nobody wants. To oh, that's true. Even over here, no one wants to work. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, but, people want you no. to pay them, then they do the work. You know, they want the raise before they show you they worth the raise. You know, you know it's, you know, it's right. funny. I have a little 15 year old nephew, and some of you know, I've been talking about want to kind of groom him and eventually let him take over my business potentially. He hasn't even spent one one minute of any seat time in my van yet. And he's talking about how much you're going to pay me. Yeah. Well, 15 years old, never done anything. And then he was like, Well, if I work with you for a week, you pay me $200. I'm like, Pay $200. You don't know anything right you know you know it's like and they feel like they're entitled to to something it's like man say it mark say it, say it. <laughs> yeah bro you know, out, out here bro there's a lot of dudes doing this you know what i mean and to be honest with you most of these dudes at one point in my life i've helped you know whether whether they like me now or they don't like me now i hope that they give me the respect that they know that i've been out here doing this 
for a long for a long time, bro. You know, I don't have a jealous bone in my body. You know, for example, when Eddie was working for somebody, Eddie, he lives two two blocks away from me. When he was working for somebody, yo, you need a window to do a side job, bro. You tell me what it is, it's sitting in my rack outside. You know what I mean? I don't I keep my eyes on my own paper. You understand what I'm saying? Like maybe that's because I always got work. I don't I don't concern myself with that. Like I know right now James could tell me. He was talking about going back to the army. Bro, go back to the army, bro. Like do what do what's best for you. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I just won't do the retail work and I'll have all the dealers. Like everybody knows. I was using a kid that was he'd come out, he was clean on drugs. He was good for six months. I'd go buy a little truck, put him in it, you know, take on work that I was rejecting. And then when he'd go bad, I'd send him back. But like my boy Anthony told me, every time I came, whether I was out of a rehab or out of jail, and I knocked on your door, you never missed a meal with or without me. So I made sure that I was never dependent on somebody else or other factors. Right. You know, Joey, that's on Autoglass Tech Talk. You know, he's got a he's got a pretty good business, bro. He's got the gift of gab. We're cool. He lives a town over. We don't really even cross paths. He's got, you know, a few of the dealers out here that I don't. You know, Who's that? Joey Joey Santoro, three J's. He's he's out here. Okay, but we don't really cross paths. We don't we don't really beef. Like his work is his work and. My work is my work, and sometimes, you know, people change between us, but it came down to people changing, you know? He's pretty established. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Jeremy's out there, you know, but we don't cross paths. Like, lately, bro, I don't hear anybody say, oh, I got a price from somebody I know. It, like, rarely, rarely, rarely ever happens. It's usually the dealer calling me, uh, a branch, you know, something that branches off from the dealer calling me. Or a body shop or a fleet account that told me, use me. And I don't really, you know, I don't get too many cold calls anymore. Oh, uh, what's the best price you could do? So they stand out in my mind because they drive me, they drive me fucking wild, bro. You know, <laughs> I'll sit there and think about it. Like, oh, I hope their brakes fail going through the intersection because they didn't win. <laughs> no, not really, though. Yeah. Not, like, you yeah, know, yeah. Here, bro. I care about the job I do. If I put my name on it, I care about it. I'm going to make sure it's perfect. I'm going to make sure that they're satisfied. I'm going to do everything that I promised you that I'm going to do. I'm not going to do any more, and I'm definitely not going to do any less. If there's an issue, 100%. You're at the top of the list. It gets rectified. You're good. I stand behind what I do. If you choose somebody else, choose somebody else, you know? Yeah. So I got a question saw- for, you, for you, Mark. So you don't travel that much for work, like going to town over, but when it comes to vacationing, do you vacation, like, outside of Jersey or, like, Go anywhere I else. Vac- I, I don't vacation, bro. You know, like I feel most comfortable at work. It's just what I know. Work, yeah, yeah. you know, some people dread their job. Yeah. I really don't. I mean, I'm out and about in my area. It ain't work if you're having fun. You know, I tell people that it ain't work if you're having fun. It ain't a job. It's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's exactly oh, what you've explained. It's a lifestyle. You know what I mean? I love working on cars. Also, like vacation. Yeah. Okay. So if you uh, could yeah. hypothetically go on a dream vacation, Mark, where would you go? Like, what's some places that you would go if you weren't working? Damn, bro, I, I don't know, man. Oh, you don't know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah even think about that. Yeah, we <laughs> need to about leaving the two towns. <laughs> kidnap Mark and take him on a vacation. Yeah. You know, this is got to be this year because any little mini vacation I would take is for my daughter's cheerleading, you know? Mm-hmm. And this year there's Memphis, Tennessee, and Florida two times, and you know, even a weekend in Baltimore, something like that. I'll go do that. I'll justify okay. it. Yeah, yeah. The point, I don't really do anything for myself, you know? Yeah. You put it out, pour it all back into your kids. So you like a cheer day? You like, no, you'd be watching the routines and go to those things. Are those fun? Bro, the, <laughs> the, the, the cheer that she was doing until coronavirus happened, it's like the military. Like, you drop your kid off into a room that has no windows, and you just hear yelling from the outside lobby area like they don't want to let you see oh, because man. parents bro these parents get jealous you know like they'll say something so if they see a girl in a position where their daughter's not where they feel they should be yeah. you're gonna have a bunch of bickering women you know what i'm saying right I'm gonna... yeah. so it's probably yeah. a lot of women now though right so you probably do well at those events huh bro <laughs> you already know like so... what's your number <laughs> Oh, let me get yours too. <laughs> yeah. 
So are cheer women, are cheer uh cheerleading like parents like what's the difference between like a cheer mom and a soccer mom? A uh, cheer mom is just ruthless, bro. They will do anything. Like they'll they'll go like Nancy Nancy Kerrigan, Tanya Harding to a little kid. <laughs> Feel their kid should be in a higher position, you know? Right. Like they take a knee, bro. I swear. Like they're crazy like that. And it's usually the ones that are like that can never cheer in their life that yeah. are vicariously living through their kids. Yeah, they live you know? their kid. You had to be the cheerleader. Yeah. They weren't. They weren't. Yeah. Yeah. yeah my... Little league dad, football dad. I mean, you dealt with football dad too, right, Mark, with your son? So football is a different sport, bro. Okay. So football right now at the youth level, you got people pulling up and a brand new to the gills. You know, Yukon Denali loaded. Right. And then you got you got the single mom on a budge who thinks her kid is gonna take her out the projects. So it's a real diverse area in football. Yeah. And that's where there's a lot of bickering. You know, everybody wants their kid to play this position, everyone wants them to play that position. Bro, I'll throw a ball fifty fifty yards down the side. I'm not bullshitting you, bro. Right? And then I walk off the field and let all these other dudes yell at the kids. Right. So yeah, because all the parents know. can coach. They know that they coach. They play Madden. They watch Monday Night Football, man. They know how to coach. <laughs> all the Al Bundys. <laughs> exactly. That's what it comes down to, bro. That's what it comes down to. That's yeah. it's it's ruthless. Those are two sports, I swear to you, are ruthless sports for children. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's the loudest, the squeakiest wheel gets the oil sometimes in those sports. But I will say cheerleading is way more ruthless than football. Yeah, I'm so glad my daughters did not. My my daughters did dance and that shit when they're real little, but they had no desire to keep doing that stuff or play sports. Thank God, because man, I couldn't. That would drive me nuts. Yeah. dealing with that shit. Now, now it's not like, dude. When I was a kid playing, like if you sucked, you sucked. Yeah, you didn't. Yeah, yeah you that's all that. Uh, you get a competition trophy, you know, participation trophy, and. Yeah, and, and shit like that. So, you know, it's, it's way different from like when we grew up and how, how it is. Yeah. And even in the South, it's different. It's kind of more cutthroat. Like, hey, you good or you not good? They, they tell my, you up my, front. Bas- my basketball coaches I had when I was in junior high couldn't talk to adults the way they talked to us back then. You know, like <laughs> the way they talk, you know, 30, 35 years ago, me anyways, I'm old. I'm older than all you guys, but. There's no way they could even talk to a, another adult the way they talked to us kids when they were coaching us. So this is a whole different society, you yeah. know? Yeah, now that's a different Probably. world and age we live in. So last question, Mark. We better be uh, mindful of your time. Last question before we get you out of here. So you say you in your town. It's a lot of places to eat, a lot of bars and shit. So hit us with some Jersey me- a Jersey meal for you and a Jersey drink. Real I mean, local shit. Yeah, hit us with some <laughs> local shit, man. Like if I was coming out there. Like yeah. you're like, hey, bro, you Real got to check this spot out. What is that spot? I, I would say probably the best spot to eat at out here. I like I like Ruth Chris okay. or not Ruth Chris, or Chris Michaels up in Woodbridge. I mean, it's it's better than Ruth Chris. I went to Ruth Chris for the for the first time in AC mm-hmm. a couple nights ago, and it was supposed to be the best meal you ever ate out here. You hear him rapping about it and shit. Yeah. It really wasn't that good. It was like TJI Fridays on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> You go to Chris Michaels, it's more like an independent owner. Everything's mm-hmm. better, everything's fresher. <laughs> we got the Brazilian barbecue out here. Uh, it's called the Rodizio. So yes. they just bring you beef that's freshly cooked, and they cut it for you. You either say yay or nay. Wow. They know what it is, and it's all fresh. Fernandez Steakhouse up in South Amboy, I'll go there. But usually, I just like I said, I stay in town. You know what I mean? Yeah. What's, what's your daily lunch spot? Oh, I don't eat lunch, bro. <laughs> I think that's a lot of us. <laughs> All right, so when you at, when you at the bar, what's your drink of choice? Oh, well, Tito's and Sprite depends. Depends how rowdy I feel like getting. Depends what. The is. Sometimes I just pound any. You know, it all it all depends on what is what's going on. Tonight. To pound any. Yeah. <laughs> so you're a Giants or Jets fan? I'm a Giants fan. My kids like the Giants. Okay. Uh. The jet seat this old man was giving me were a lot better. So, you know, I just, I'll, bro, I play for the name on yeah. the back, not on the front. So, like, I'm not trying to wear the wrong shit out there. Dude, Giants fans are definitely classier than Jets fans. I'll tell you that right now. Jets fans are on a whole different low of, like, dirtbag. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I mean, I think I think the whole nation knows that. Anybody who's a football fan can probably get that one. So, well, the Giants right. was just in the news. Like, they just fired Mark Colombo. They said allegedly him and uh, Jeff Judge got in a fight. 
Damn, bro. I haven't even, bro. I have not yeah, had time. The head coach, they say allegedly the head coach got to fight with the offensive line coach and fired him. But offensive wow. line coach is 6'8, 330. I don't think anybody yeah. want them problems. Oh, shit. <laughs> no, that, that, no, that's a whole different set of problems. That's yeah. a big dude right there. Yeah. Jets and Giants suck. The whole NFC East sucks. That whole it's division heavy. should just be written off, like for reals. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you go to the Giants. You go to the Giants. The West Coast is where all the good football is at right now. So, but shit, probably 10, 15 years ago, the NFC West was that same way. The Cardinals would suck. The Seahawks. For that, that, but that's we, that's history. <laughs> yeah, the that's Cowboys. history. So, we talking about right now? Yeah, we right now, right now. <laughs> hey, the NFC West is where it's at. The Cardinals, Seahawks, Rams. Yeah, all yeah, of we them. got we got uh, next next weekend. We got the Patriots over there. So okay. I want to be a good game. Hopefully. Cool, Mark. Well, we appreciate your time, brother. Appreciate the insight um, and good good tips. You know, like you say, man, uh, it's a fine line between confidence and arrogance. But most importantly, you got to know who you are and what audience you're going out of. And nothing's wrong with stating what kind of customer you want. Don't chase the customer. You know, do what, do what works best for you. So you gave me some good take-home messages and tips just to, for life in general, man. So I really, truly appreciate you on the time and um, the advice that you gave, man. Yeah, right on, Mark. Nice talking to you, brother. Yeah. You too. All right, man. Y'all take care.